And let's briefly look at alternating current versus direct current. Let's look at what they actually are, what the differences are, and how they are being produced. So AC stands for alternating current, AC, and DC stands for direct current, DC. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between AC and DC. Let's do it in a visual way so that I can explain easy again to you what the actual differences are between AC and DC. Now let's start by drawing a graph and on the graph on the vertical axis we plot the voltage and on the horizontal axis we plot the time as the time progresses. So we start off by drawing a, a zero line so we identify where the voltage is zero. right? So above the zero line the voltage is positive and below the zero line the voltage is negative. And now since AC is called alternating current you can probably expect that the current alternates, something changes over time. What it actually does is it starts uh, at the zero line, then the voltage increases, it becomes positive, it goes up, it goes up, and then it reaches a peak point and then it drops, right? It drops towards the zero line, it goes through the zero line and the voltage be actually becomes negative for a while and it follows exactly the same shape as it did during the start of the cycle. So it becomes more and more negative, then it reaches kind of a peak negative voltage, a voltage as low as possible, and then it starts to climb up again, goes towards the and goes towards the zero line. And then when it hits the zero line, it starts to do exactly the same as it did before. So it follows the same pattern. And this is what we refer to as alternating current. And this wave is an alternating current sinus waveform. It's a perfect sinus waveform, right? And now on this graph, we can recognize a few specific points. So first of all, what we're looking at here in this graph is the alternating current sinus waveform, but we're looking at two complete cycles of the waveform. So one complete cycle is when you start from the, the zero, you go up towards the positive peak, you dive down through the zero towards the negative peak, and then back up again to the zero. That is one complete cycle of an alternating current sinus waveform, right? So we're looking here at two identical complete waveforms. So now in this graph, we can recognize a few points. So first of all, we can recognize the peak voltage, so the peak positive voltage, which is right where you get at the highest point of the, um, of the sinus waveform. But what, this is different than the effective voltage of, the, of this alternating current, right? The effective voltage is somewhat lower. You can kind of imagine that you, you average out, you smoothen out the, the positive voltage, and somewhere around this line you get the effective voltage of the sinus waveform. So let's assume you are in North America and you're operating your system on a 120 volt alternating current system, then this is uh, your effective voltage. Uh, the same is true for your negative effective voltage, right? That's the same story. Everything below the zero line is just a complete copy of everything above the zero line. And then there's something else which we can identify in this graph, which is the, the cycle. So you understand you're looking at two complete cycles of an alternating current sinusoidal waveform. And the time it takes for one cycle to, to be completed uh, refers to the, the frequency of the of the voltage right so in this example it takes one sixtieth of a second so one out of sixty one sixtieth of a second it takes for that cycle to be completed so that's rather fast and due to that we express this alternating current as 60 hertz so it's got a frequency of 60 hertz 120 volt alternating current electrical power with a frequency of 60 hertz now, depending where you are on this beautiful planet, you can also operate your system on a different voltage or frequency. So you can also be working on a 230 volt alternating current voltage uh, with a frequency that's just a little bit shorter. So then it's typically 50 hertz. So it takes one out of 50 seconds to complete a complete uh, sinusoidal wave. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. Okay, so I think that's enough about alternating current. Now let's compare this. Let's compare this graph with the graph for direct current.
and then we draw the same yellow line where the voltage is zero and then it's fairly easy to explain what diode current is because diode current doesn't fluctuate over time it is direct it is steady it is supposed to be steady normally it's steady and uh, normally it's always positive so the voltage just remains at one point it doesn't fluctuate normally it's not supposed to or it doesn't fluctuate over time but it can have any kind of voltage level right so the typical voltage that you see at low dc power are 12 24 48 volts but it can have any kind of voltage level and normally it's steady it doesn't fluctuate over time so of course you can also have systems that have a negative voltage that can happen but that's really rare normally people always use a positive diode current voltage system so that's just a simple visual representation of the differences between alternating current and direct current now let's also identify which kind of appliances operate on ac versus dc and that's just a generalization right but um, heavy duty generators or alternators they typically work on ac uh, normally in your house all your wall outlets they all provide ac power as well uh, large power plants most of them all operate on ac and inverters they also they provide ac they actually take dc and then turn it into ac and then if you compare that to dc appliances dc appliances almost always have a battery included in their system uh, because batteries always provide dc power direct current so uh, power banks rechargeable devices your your phone your laptop your tablet uh, your electric toothbrush all of them they operate on dc current and they normally if they provide any power such as your your power banks then they normally provide dc power as well unless there's an inverter built into the system that takes the dc and turns it into ac so now you understand what the difference between ac and dc is why it's called alternating current and diode current and which kind of appliances normally operate on ac versus dc now what i want to do at the last step i want to show you actually what the operating principle is behind ac why does the current fluctuate so we go back to the origins and i want to show you how ac is being produced so in order to make AC power, in order to make AC current, we take something that conducts electricity, a conductor, it's normally just a copper wire, and we, we wind that copper wire into a perfect coil. We turn that copper wire into a copper coil. And then the ends of the coil, we make some kind of terminal to it so that we can connect some other wiring to it. And then once we have this coil, we take a magnet, it can be a permanent magnet or an electromagnet, and we move the magnet from one side to the other side through the coil. We move it from one side to the other side through the coil, and then we just move it back again. That's what we do. And then a the result of us moving this magnet through the coil, this is just a physical uh, phenomenon, as we are moving this magnet through the coil, we're actually producing electricity. We're producing electric current. So we're producing alternating current as we're moving this magnet through the coil. Because as we're moving it one way, we're producing a current flow through the coil in one way. And as we're moving it back again, then the current starts to flow the other way, right? It does exactly the same, but just opposite. As we're moving it in, the current flows one way. And as we're moving it out, the current flows the other way. And this is the, the core operating principle. This is how you are generating alternating current. That's not the difficult, right? Um, and you know that DC direct current is being produced either way by batteries or by taking AC, <coughs> AC and then turning it into DC. So let's move away from the whiteboard. I think we spent enough time here. But now at least you understand properly what the difference is between AC and DC. So you understand what the sinus waveform refers to, how it forms alternating current. You understand about voltages, about frequency, and how frequency translate into the hertz, into the frequency of your alternating current power source. And you understand what actually the, the foundation is, how you produce AC by moving the magnet through the coils.